Well, I feel so compelled to tell you guys stories this morning, so I'm going to continue to tell you stories about what happened there on Monster Rock. You know what? I'm going to tell you a story about Click Attack John. Oh, boy. Well, you know, you guys know from the last story I told you guys about the cats that was thrown off that bridge, that tall bridge that was fell down. Matter of fact, you know, I'll go back and I'll tell you about that boat one more time. When my brother Jerry was going like this and dropped down on that boat and that thing was going <whistles> like that, my brother Jim said it missed the back of the boat by just a few feet. You know, my brother Jerry was trying to put a bowling ball right through that guy's boat. He just didn't give a fuck about those people in that boat. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point clear, you know, then the cats and everything like this. Now let's go talk about click attack Johnny. Oh, click attack Johnny here. I'm a terrible soul. Oh boy, oh boy. A real chip off the block from my old daddy there, old B.B. Cooper, that was actually the Zodiac Killer. That was random mossy rock washed and hiding at a bowling alley and ultimately we moved to morton washington migrated but anyway now let's go back talk to click attack johnny for a second this reason i this story always lives with me all the time because this is what i did after they killed those cats you know there was there was a cat there still at the bowling alley and you know i couldn't I just couldn't face that cat being found and being thrown off that bridge. Uh, God damn it, I fucking mean it. And there's this river, there's this creek. It's not a river, it's a creek that's on the other side of the blueberry fields. And it's the Klickitat. Matter of fact, the Klickitat Indians migrate up through that valley up there, if anybody knew that. So anyway, it's the Klickitat, the Klickitat uh, creek. So, I've gone over there, and I've taken this cat over there, and I've taken this string about this long, and a nail, and probably a hammer. <laughs> and, or I've just used a rock, I'm sure. I've just probably just used a rock. I didn't have a hammer, I'm sure. But, I, what I did was, I took that cat over there, and I tied it, I tied that string onto the cat's hand, paw, you know, so I could hook it to a piece of wood. It was a good sized piece of wood and it would float really good on the click cat. And I hooked that nail in it and I tied that on it. And I put that cat on that and I let the cat go down the river. You know, I'm hoping that the cat had a better life. You know, I seen something like this when I was a kid like, Okay, uh, an animal jumped on something and it just started flowing down the river and went out of sight, you know. And, and someday the cat, the, the dog came back, you know, some kind of a show like this that probably gave me the idea of putting that cat on this piece of wood and sending it down the click cat. And I can goddamn see that cat just flowing down the river on that piece of wood right out of sight. I hope it barged up somewhere. I hope the cat lived. But I goddamn tell you, I gave that cat a better chance than my family would have right there at Mossy Rock, Washington. You know, I mean, what I'm ta saying is just true. I really sent a cat down the click attack hook to a piece of string, and I, I did that because I thought it was a better option for the cat to be thrown off the bridge with bowling balls. You know, I mean, I had feelings for things. I was held in a rabbit's cage in Port Angeles, Washington, and here these people are doing this to animals. Will I be next? I mean, goddamn, that's exactly what I'm thinking in my mind. I'm scared of these fucking people. You know, the reason that they have me doing stuff is because I follow the leader and I'm in fear if I don't do it they'll turn on me and I'll tell you another thing about the BB guns and stuff when my mother did get there to Mossy Rock Washington what happened was my dad and Jerry left me and Jim at the bowling alley 
They went and got my mom. Me and Jim took the bull with her and nothing happened while they were gone. At Mossy Rock. And my mom and Bonnie shows up and they pulled the this trailer with all of our stuff in it in there and the belongings that they brought well when they brought all their belongings and stuff up there nothing of mine was even there my bicycle that I was molested for was gone because they reward you with if they shh I'll reward you don't say a goddamn word you don't know nothing. You're deaf, you're dumb, you're blind. You know, they'll reward you with objects such as a yellow motorcycle, a 30-odd stick, and give you BB guns to let you act out. You know, you don't have it better than this, do you? I mean, Jesus Christ. You know, in that bowling alley parking lot, they were acting out and doing stuff. You know, Jerry, stick him up, fucker gets the gun thrown out of his hand stuff. Here's me and my brother Jim in that parking lot and it's filled with, with customers. And my brother Jim, you know, they're saying stuff about, well, Paul Manberg, you know, they've already told me this in the past about this guy named Paul Manberg and his folks on the a w in Mossy Rock, Washington, up there, downtown Mossy Rock, Washington, there's the a and w An A&W store, this is the only thing that re relates to me as, as something that I've seen before in this here town, because I've never seen any of these other stores, I've never seen a, a I don't believe i ever seen a, a 76 station, and that's the first place i ever seen a 76 station, and 7 and 6 is 13, right there at Mossy Rock. You know, right there at Mossy Rock was this, the Zodiac Killer thing, and it all started at this bowling alley with the Hansons in Port Angeles, Washington, and... Also, here's another county car they're lining up today. And the, uh, geez, I just lost my point of mind. When I see these county cars pulling up and they have county riding on the front and they just line up, you know, that I push so much goddamn button now. So, anyway, oh, so much things happen. Oh, oh, and then that parking lot, there's all these people there. And, you know, they've said this negative things about Paul Manberg. And Paul Manberg's a fantastic bowler, by the way. And they're telling me, you don't trust this Paul Manberg. The, my brother Jim is for sure. He says he likes boys. You know, my brother Jim's saying he likes boys. Why is my brother Jim saying this, by the way? My brother Jim's sucking his finger in Port Angeles, Washington. I think maybe something's happened in Port Angeles, Washington now looking back. And my mother also tells me in the future from this time, you know, Jimmy's been like this since he was found naked in Port Angeles. In a fetal position, she'd tell me. You know, what have these parents done to these children, you guys? Is what I'm saying. So, here we go. And Paul Manberg, you know, he likes boys. I'm like, you mean he likes boys? I'm a boy. Maybe he'll like me. You know, I see nothing wrong with Paul Manberg. Paul Manberg just, I watch him roll his bowling ball and stuff. I imitate people excellent. You know, I mean, I'm learning from what I see. My dad trained me that way. I'm always learning. I'm always evolving. So, here, we're in the bowling alley parking lot, and my brother Jim wants me to tie Paul Manberg's antenna on his 1969 SS Orange Chevelle Malibu into a knot. My brother tells me to do something. You know, when my brothers tell me to do something, you better do it. So I go over there and I put his thing, I just twist it around, I just hook the ball right there so he could rock it off, and hopefully it wouldn't mess up Paul's car. And I did that, because my brother told me. My brother Jim went around and tied everybody's antenna in a knot in that whole parking lot to tell everybody if you say something, 
will tie you in a knot. What well, I guess. I'll tell you another thing that happened in that Bowen parking lot. I think it was the same day. It was earlier after the cars first got in there. Me and Jim's around the back of the bowling alley between the laundry, like back there by the laundromat and the bowling alley. And Jim's got a screwdriver in his hand. We came out of the machine room door right there down to have it open. Me and Jim walked in there. Me and Jim wouldn't mess with Dad's equipment. Now, Jerry would. Jerry's not allowed in the back room of the bowling alley anymore in the bowling alleys. Nobody's allowed in the back room of these bowling alleys except me and my dad because these guys will sabotage our, my dad's bowling alleys, we found out. And me and Jim's out there and all of a sudden Jim throws a s screwdriver uh, over the corner of the bowling alley and me and him go running around to see where the screwdriver's going to land because it flew. All of a sudden it hits one car and goes bam right through the window of another car. <laughs> you know, and we just don't do nothing. We just fade back around the back of the bowling alley. I mean, I'm telling you guys the truth of what how things was. And then, um, boy, I tell you, there's so many stories that I, I relate to. Well, my brother Jimmy, he's got that 30-odd six, you know, that he's got right there and before it gets taken away from him before it gets taken away from my mom and them's back there and he hasn't got that gun taken away from him yet but we're in the house and I'm small that gun's pretty heavy and Jim's got me looking up there at the top of the hill looking at the Glenn's his house that lived in this house prior he has me looking up on the hillside up at their house with that 30 odd 6 through the window of our house looking up on that hill tell me what you see up there they're always wanting me to look and see what the, i could find out there for them i don't know why why was we pointing a gun up at glenn's house and he says where's there you know to, he's asking me what i'm seeing because i guess jim don't see as good as i do in long distance because i'll tell you what i've got what they call 1320 vision and i could see really far away I could see a pop can if it was sitting on the road the furthest distance away from where I could see it right now. Because I could see things that good, they would ask me, you know, stuff. And I'd go, or how about this? John, take a shot at that. Can you shoot that? And I'd pull up on something and I'd fucking shoot the goddamn light out. You know, me and Jim, we were shooting lights out in Morton, Washington prior to the Short Ridge boy getting murdered. Me and Jim was up there with that 22 that you had to take a, uh, you had to take a, a knife and pull the shell out, pick the shell out of it to get the shell out. Well, in the newspapers, they would pass off that 30, 30, that 22 as the gun with the weak spring, not saying the true caliber of the gun, and that gun was taken away by Mike Pedersen, my boy scout leader, and Ron, Le, Ron, Ron LaBarge, rookie, right there. Those two cops came to the house when Jim was shooting downstairs, and their exact words was, Jim, bring the gun down. You know, these are cops. They shouldn't know Jim Wright because Jim Wright's been hiding in the house. Jim Wright won't go to school. Jim Wright don't know anybody as far as I know. But they knew my brother's name right there. When they called up the stairway, they said, Jim, bring that gun down. You know, and they took the gun away. And my mom came down. She got down goddamn all over me. If she didn't get down on Jim one bit about that gun, she took goddamn right down on me about it. So anyway, I'm just telling the stories how they are because, you know what, I love to tell the truth. And I was suppressed when I was a kid. And they tell me, you're blind, you're stupid, you're dumb, you know nothing. You mean nothing to me. You are dead to me. I mean, those are the things that I'm being said, told by my family members, all of them except my dad. Thank you for your time today. And you have a great day. And my brother, Jerry Wright, I would like you to goddamn explain now. Thank you for your time, everyone.